Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. We have Nicola Salta, and she is a business and professional transformation coach, and she's just amazing. And she has some great advice today that she wants to share with people about women entrepreneurs and how to help them and how they can grow and excel in their community. So, Nicola, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Well, hi, Stacey. It's just so nice to be with you today. Thank you for having me on. Um, I help women in leadership and also women who are looking to redefine themselves so that they can create a better work-life balance. And I help them multiply their incomes by working with them to redefine a niche and scale without having the burnout, burnout and the overwhelm. Right. I love that. And, you know, in today's society, we are just recently mentioned very briefly that, you know, life has changed so much from, you know, for women entrepreneurs, you know, from where they were to where we are now. And especially yeah. now with the changes in life and, and technology changing and, and how the business world has changed it so rapidly and it's continued to change rapidly. You know, so what are some of the things that you feel can really help a woman entrepreneur really make her stand in, in our society and really, you know, avoid the burnout also in, in the overall end? Yeah, it's a good question because as we all know, we're really good at multi-skilling as women. That's that's what makes us so successful. And there's so many times when we just don't know when to stop actually because we are so good at multi-skilling. Um, but to begin with, just to answer the first part of your question, I think the traditional success models that have been around often feel like a, a square peg. A woman feels like a square peg in a round hole sometimes because... Uh following like the old paradigms and traditions of how men set up to do business and you know men over the last few hundred years have had the opportunity to push hard and that's all they've done they've worked they've created money and income their role was to bring that money home at the time to women mm -hmm. and um but of course our roles have changed now but the paradigm model of business has not changed and it's still very much a male dominated business world and um I feel that women, because there are such a high percentage of women entrepreneurs now that far outweigh male entrepreneurs in the business world, um, women have moved into that line of work because they've had more independence. They're able mm -hmm. to maintain that quality of life and their values of community and family that are so important to them. And I feel like the burnout and overwhelm often comes when women are feeling they've got to do everything, still be the mom, still be the wife, still be the best friend, the daughter, and also run their businesses how men would run their businesses. And of course, we just cannot do that. Um, and I, I feel that going right back to square one for women in terms of like identifying why they want their business, what impact they want to make with their business mm -hmm. is super important along with the value that they're going to bring, because that helps you then when you know the value you're bringing, it helps you stay on track with pacing yourself. Yes. And I think, you know, men push, 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 because they could, because everything else is taken care of for them at home. Mm -hmm. at the and we learned these roles. And now women are learning that they still want to be nurturers. They still want to have that essence. They don't want to be a, businessman because we're business women yes uh, and it's it's maintaining that balance with their values and being part of the community and just working differently so that's the first step of it and I think that also then spills into that overwhelm and burnout piece when we're trying to be like men yes and, and you know do you have some advice on how women could actually start to begin to um, create a career for themselves without feeling burnout, without, you know, how could, how can they be recognized too? you know, in, in, in today's society, you know, we are starting to be recognized, but we do need the support of other women, you know? So what's some of your intake on, on ways that women can get noticed in, in the, in the business uh, industry and yet, you know, avoid a lot of the repercussions of, of, uh, working so hard, making themselves noticed. Yeah, I um I always begin when I'm doing um any kind of mentoring or coaching work with um women to begin with um your 
low hanging fruit, what comes easy to you, um, defining your purpose mm -hmm. and then the value you want to bring to your community. What is it that's really important to you um, yes. without the need for having to stand out? Um, it's about what's going on internally. So it's up leveling that inner wiring that you have with your mindset and who you think you are before you even get into business. Yes. And helping you identify, identify and join the dots together of what, what's easy for you. And it might not be what Jane Do Doe is doing. And that's okay. You know, it's what's unique and easy for you that can then transpire into a service or a product or a direction where you can feel fulfilled by it. And you're offering a service that's making an impact and a difference, basically. Do you find that sometimes women try to compare themselves to either other women or they try to compare themselves with other men and they get stressed because they want to be at a certain level, but sometimes by comparing yourself, you can actually, it could be an adverse effect in a sense, because you're, you're doing more harm because everybody comes from a different journey and a different walk and you can't really and compare yourself to others you have to really be you now do you find that in when you are coaching other women I do it's it's actually improved um in the last 10 years I've, I've been working with women for 28 years now and I've noticed lots of different trends I have seen it improve in terms of the comparison and I work with women to move into that um space of not minding I call it not minding what other women are doing and yes. stay focused on what is important to you and on track and emphasizing that each of us here are here to fulfill a different purpose and to be of service to each other and you know it's I think I think because of our grooming over the last few thousand years that we have got into that way of comparing ourselves to mm -hmm. other women because we were being judged perhaps, perhaps by, I'm not blaming men here, but it's just something that's happened and evolved um, where we just sought the whole time to be the best we could to get the attraction of a man. And then mm -hmm. that's over into how we work as well. And with our girlfriends, really and truly with our female colleagues, if we were to come together as one big community and support each other, um, our strengths, our weaknesses, our qualities that we have, we would be a phenomenal force. And yes. not working against men by any means, but working with them mm -hmm. to show this different way that, of working that we have, how we see the intuitive abilities that yes. we have, that sense of knowing that we have. Um, and I, I think having a group of women come together, bringing your friends together, helps you then to celebrate each other's qualities you know yeah. mm -hmm. and each other rather than that draining that terrible draining energy where we put ourselves into comparing and then we're not actually moving forward with what we should be doing we're actually going backwards spending too much time on yes. other people you know and I think sometimes that could be a self-doubt or a self-esteem issue too. You know, when we start to compare ourselves, we're not really looking at ourselves and really, um, you know, being proud of the person that we are. Sometimes we, you know, we're our worst critics and we tend to not give ourselves the credit that we deserve. What do you think? Absolutely, Absolutely Stacey. I mean, I, part of my work um, um, when I start doing the deep dives with women is to work on insecurities, low self-esteem, low self-worth, which often comes from previous life experiences that they've had when they were younger. They've been exposed to events or trauma that's wired their nervous system to believe that they don't deserve or they're not good enough. Um, they may have been told that as a little girl, you know, and then they've grown up to believe that. So the success of a female entrepreneur really comes down to grooming her mindset Yes. Uh, really helping her believe and rewire those old patterns that mm -hmm. she's used to thinking about herself and yeah. picking one pattern, just one pattern and working on that consistently and reversing it so mm -hmm. that you expose your brain to a new experience of belief 
and it can be done. And this is, I do it every day with my clients and it can take up to maybe 270 days to make a change. It's not, yeah. the, it's not the 21 days that we were always taught. Um, and consistency is the key. So you get that feeling of insecurity or I'm not good enough or Jane Doe's doing this. You immediately shift it into, but look at what I'm doing. Look what I accomplished in the last three years. Um, mm -hmm. look where I've come, look how I've grown. And you keep focusing on what you've accomplished. Yes. And you keep your eye on the prize. Don't mind what everyone else is doing. Right. And I think everyone, you know, has different goals and different levels of achievement. You know, what you might feel is a high achievement, a high achievement someone else may not. And I, so it's really self-serving yourself and, and doing what's best for you, I think. What do you think? Yeah, I absolutely, I agree with you on that because we're all different. We all operate in our own bubbles. And um, I feel that we've definitely... Um, got different values and what's important to us and that's what makes us unique if we're yeah. all the same <laughs> mm -hmm. be a bit boring wouldn't it yes um, and so that brings up the other piece of this too in terms of accepting and celebrating someone else's accomplishments yes to inspire you mm -hmm. to motivate you to know that you could do the same if you wanted to right and I think it's really important to be around people that have the same goal objectives too, you know, because a lot of times if, if you have high achievers with, with, with great aspiration around you, you know, the energy kind of rubs off, you know, if you are around people that have negative energy and, you know, they just, you know, nothing ever satisfies them or they're never good enough. And, you know, and they exemplify this through their verbal, you know, um, behavior, they're just, it's just going to, I think, pull other people down. So, you know, sometimes I think it's the environment we're around too. We have to really consider who are we spending the most time with and are they good influencers in our life? What do you think? Yeah, I am. Um, surrounding yourself with the right people is key. Um, I feel that um, if you're going to launch a business or if you're in a business where you're about to scale, and go mm -hmm. up to the next level, you certainly have to be with those similar like-spirited people um, yeah. in terms of reaching that goal. And if you don't have those people in your community, it's looking outside of that, maybe on social media or following people who have accomplished what you would also like to accomplish, you know, mm -hmm. um, and making them as, as role models for yourself and checking in every day with what they're doing or listening to their inspirations um it's a constant work in progress yeah it definitely is it definitely is now when when people are making transformation in their life like where do they start a lot of times you know women you know they want to they want to put a, a new persona a new goals in their life they want to really they have ideas of where they want to be and you know how do you get there how do you start planning that transformation to success and feeling good about yourself and and get into the point of life where you are happy at where you are yeah it's um where I begin and when I'm helping women with their transformation, um, I'm a big believer in beginning with identifying and defining your purpose so mm -hmm. that it resonates with your soul, literally, um, of why you're here. And in that moment, there's a wake up moment that's very powerful. And the woman then really starts to align with, yes, that's me. We're not quite sure at that point how it's going to build out or what that looks like, but there mm -hmm. is a, statement, a mission, if you like, a soul statement, I call it, that defines your unique brilliance. Um, the next step is then to identify what isn't working and what's holding you back. I'm, I truly believe that you can't put the icing on the cake without the cake. So we need to build the cake and make it a beautiful cake. So we don't want anything in that cake that's toxic before we move yes. in transformation and we can put the icing on it and then we can enjoy eating it. So um, I move into mindset work and like, you know, breakthroughs around identifying what's holding you back. And the work I do with that is a deep dive using holistic methods to help identify 
emotional codes, basically, key emotional codes that have been with you for a long time and discussion around that and where they've come from and helping the woman really understand that it's not her fault. It's something mm -hmm. experienced, been exposed to, and that her brain has decided that that's the truth for her. So yes. we've said about rewiring that truth into something that's more uh, serving, more beneficial to her rather than toxic and holding her back. And then at that point, uh, we then start moving forward into the transformation process and building out the purpose piece of where now she's going to be. And I literally roll up my sleeves with her and we do it together. Um, mm. She's not left watching videos and doing, you know, online courses. We work together live and we build something out that's very exciting. Now, it can be a personal transformation in terms of... Um, how she wants to show up in relationships, mm -hmm. um, type of relationship she wants to attract. It can be career-based. It mm -hmm. can be starting your own business, if that's what you wanted, or a side gig that truly aligns with you. It's really pushing the envelope, raising the bar to help you elevate into those dreams or thoughts you've had in the past, but you've never really felt you could take the step to do it. Yeah. And so that transformation process, usually because we're all so busy, it can take 12, 15 weeks, um, but it's a very powerful process. And um, often women who work with me have gone from confusion, lack of direction, lack of clarity, low self-esteem. By the time we finish, a lot of them have actually started to build a new a model for themselves, business even, where they're monetizing and building income from it um right. so it's it's a, a fascinating process and very honoring to watch right um, and these women are ready they're like they're ready to make the change yeah wow you know i i think a lot too has to um not just accepting yourself but loving yourself too i feel mm -hmm. like uh, once they start to really love who they are and they realize this is me, I love myself, you know, that self-esteem starts to boost, you know, when they start to feel good about themselves. And I think that's when the inner strength comes out, you know, that empowerment that we have within starts to seep out. And once they can make that connection to that empowerment, I think it helps people to grow to any length that they really desire if they really want it bad enough. Yeah, and that's the key. I mean, it's um, the self-love piece starts to show up when they start to see um, their lives as I help them join the dots together of what they have accomplished and who they are, how they've handled difficult situations yeah. and start to understand who they are on a much deeper level. And uh, yeah, that self-love is, is very, very important in terms of also self-love of setting boundaries yes definitely you love yourself enough um to set yourself a boundary and um step back perhaps stop repeating some of the patterns that we've traditionally done as women mm -hmm. um and and saying and saying no which doesn't mean no no not ever it's just no not yet you know right mm -hmm. right so I, I think the self-love also brings up those boundaries that perhaps they've been too scared to set, fearful of what other people might think if they don't show up, what other people, mm -hmm. women might think, as we said earlier, if they yeah. don't go through on all this, you know, um, outside of work, the pressures that women can be under to show up in all their, with all their different hats that they wear. Mm -hmm. If women can just start saying no, I mean, I had one client, she she sold her company to Pepsi and um, she'd done extremely well. And she's, she's a mother of two and she'd started another company and she's, she's doing very well with that. But one of her biggest, biggest challenges was to say, no, she was a great pleaser. Yeah. Her, great pleaser and um, great businesswoman, but she was burning out fast. Yeah. She was able to, and until we dove right back, into where she needed to keep pleasing the pattern of her father mm. and that father-daughter pattern that kept showing up through her work and 
And after that, she got it. She's setting boundaries. She put all the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together of why she was doing these things and um, able to set better boundaries now. Right. You know? It, I guess everybody really, when if someone's a people pleaser, there's always a root cause and it goes back probably somewhere in their childhood years or, you know, so, you know, somewhere along the lines, but I guess, and I guess people, at, they all have their own reason, I guess, you know, um, no, no two stories are the same, you know, it, it probably, you know, everybody, you know, has, you know, cause I, I've known many people, they go out of their way always to please yeah. somebody, even if it's going to hurt themselves, you know, where they're going to get burned out or they're going to, it, it starts to wear on them. They always say yes. And they, they have a hard time saying no. And I think that's one of the hardest things for a lot of people to do is say no, because they feel the guilt, but it's actually okay. Don't you think? Ah, yes, it is. Okay. You are really taking care of yourself when you say no, and you're taking care of that little girl within you who really wants you to look out for her. And she's still there. She's still growing up with you. She still has her hopes and dreams. And I often say to my clients, you wouldn't stand with a four-year-old and make them go into situations that they really are terrified of doing. And that's what you're doing. Every time you go please someone, your four or five-year-old inner self is screaming at you to say, but I don't want to. It's too much. Yeah. And you're ignoring it. And it's exhausting you. Mm-hmm. Very true. Very true. And do you find that you see a lot of women, even in today's entrepreneurial world, that have a hard time saying no? Or are women starting to grasp the no concept? Um, I'm just flicking back through my mind of clients I've worked with in the last year or so. And the, the observation I would make is that the higher up the ladder they are in leadership, the more likely they are to people please. And that's what I have noticed. And it hasn't really changed at that level. And the sweetest, kindest, dynamic women, amazing leaders will still go out of their way, um, oftentimes almost at doormat level. To, really? Yeah. And I, it's still a conundrum for me of how they've managed to get that far. And then I'm, with this overwhelm of pleasing, I'm guessing it's because they have been pleasing, but then they get to that place and it's too much. Yeah. And it's, um, I'm, I have to point it out to them. I am saying, do you realize this, recognize this pattern that you're doing? And they're like, yeah, but you know, so I like what people, watching people grow and I feel sorry for so-and-so and this person, a member of the team has just lost their husband. You know, they're very caring and nurturing. And I think it's that, need to nurture that gets confused with the need to please as well and it's wow. they're too very enmeshed and it's it's often at the leadership level that I'm saying it still wow you know I would think it would be the opposite as they get become a leader and they become stronger they're more apt to want to say no because they've acquired that that's how they got so high up on the archive you know level level but I guess it's the opposite wow yeah, I I was stunned. Um, it, I, I feel too, and that's how I, when we opened um, the episode today, I feel too, it's that women's need to nurture and take mm -hmm. care of that's still very innate in us and that just doesn't go away. It's whether you have kids or not, you still want to nurture. So your, your teens become your kids, if you like, yeah. um, it's built into your DNA. And um yeah, it was shocking to me too. And I mean, I started doing this work when I was in the corporate world back in London. Um, I wasn't actively coaching at that point, but I was observing and watching women hit that glass ceiling and, yeah. hitting, and hearing a lot of complaints from women. And they, I noticed even then, it was that they weren't dropping or diminishing that need to nourish or nurture. They still had that. And that's why I'm saying there's this fine line. It's like a game at the moment of balance where it's, we've got to drop the people pleasing thing and yet not drop that need to nurture. Mm -hmm. And it's to bring that into balance. Yeah. And bring that into the workplace as well as have it at home. So you're, you're getting that nurturing for yourself. Right. 
That 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 is so true. And, you know, I think I think people also like when they get get home, they they sometimes bring their work home with them. And you know, as women, even though they have so many hats to fill, they're still thinking about their their work and their responsibilities, and then they're focusing on you know their life at home, and and that could be that could interfere with their home life and and you know and their progress with you know developing a family or you know a relationship, you know. Um, how, do you have any advice for women? You know, is is there any way to, it's hard when you're an entrepreneur because you're always, you know, your business has become your baby and you're always bringing it with you. But is there a healthy way to say, okay, I'm going to have this and this time to this time for me, for, for my family, for my relationship and so forth? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of ways in. One is to get super disciplined with everything stops at eight you know, and mm -hmm. really disciplined. And then there's like sleep hygiene time where you're, you've played with the family and then you are going to take care of yourself with a bath and a book and you're not going to scroll and you're going yeah. to watch a Netflix movie. So it's actually replenishing you when you do that. And I often say to women, look, get home, do what you need to do, play dinner. And then at a certain time, switch off and do what I call the restoration pose where you lay on the bed with your legs over about three or four high cushions so your knees are higher than your heart and just yeah. like because your body cannot go anywhere and you're actually balanced relaxing your nervous system your brain might still be working but you're actually calming your nervous system which is very important um and then you know it's it's getting into a routine of doing that and knowing that and i remind them of this you are if you do have family and then you are sacrificing the family for your work because you know that they're, they're always going to be there. You're never yeah. going to get time back. You're going to get to 60 mm -hmm. and, you're, and you're not going to remember that your QuickBooks wasn't working or all the Google passwords went down um, when you're 60. You're just going to remember that there's gaps you had and it was because you were working rather than having these nurturing experiences and as you get older, it's not worth it. It's not worth losing that precious time because life yeah. is far more important than work. I'm an yeah. entrepreneur. I love what I do. And it's very important. I've made mistakes of pouring myself into my work the whole time. And mm -hmm. I'm in an age where I've had a few regrets. And I'm now yeah. sharing those regrets with clients to say, don't do this. Work, but work in balance. No one told me to yeah. do that. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's very important because you will not get that time back. Right. No, you will not get that time back. You know, you wrote a book. Tell me a little about that book. Well, I've written a book called Finding Your Queen, and it's in the process of being published. And this is, this is a book that is helping women to, it's revolu revolutionizing um, the success of women now of finding their queen. And their queen is that empowerment self. Mm -hmm. And it's taking old traditions of how women used to be, you know, yeah. the warrior self, the queen self, um, and then putting that into everyday real life and work and making new choices for yourself. And I think that um, women at this point love ancient wisdoms. They love traditions. They love ceremonies, but they also want to know how they can apply this to their mm -hmm. life now. And it's helping women gain new perspectives on that new role that they have and yeah. breaking free of some of these models that we've actually created ourselves. It's not all yeah. men. Um, and communicating differently, um, being in a relationship differently and showing up, not expecting your guy to psychically know everything you want. Um, yeah. Your partner, he sounds like a guy, of course. Um, and, um, so it covers quite a broad spectrum of living life as a queen in your power with expectations of raising the bar, but also boundaries and self-care. Um, mm -hmm. also an ebook I have available called, um, revolutionizing your success, a new era for women, which you can, um, if you come to my website, you can join the website and you get a free copy of this book about living in your purpose tapping into your creativity to carve out that worthy new direction that you're looking for and you can mm -hmm. get 
links to that um, through my website, which is nicolasalter.com. I love it. Now, what are some of the services that you provide? Well, I do. I help women in leadership to uh, scale uh, mm -hmm. this. So I have a Breaking the Mold um, VIP Masterclass that helps women in business go up to the next level holistically mm -hmm. and to monetize in a new way and really um, help them define the impact and value that they bring and improve their up-level mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, women redefine themselves. So there's a lot of women who want to broaden their horizons, not sure what they want to do, or women who want to step into a new career or even start a new business. I help them right. with that too. So um, I'm often running webinars and groups, but I have the Redefine Yourself program for breaking the mold to help scale VIP masterclass. Mm -hmm. And um, I offer free strategy calls. So you can set up a 30 minute strategy call with me. I'll sit mm -hmm. down with you. I'm going to listen. I'm going to help you join some dots together, identify what me might be holding you back. Right. Uh, identify a new direction that could be explored from everything we share during this call. Mm -hmm. And um, that gives you a nice foundation from where to, to work and begin. And then sometimes, you know, women will work with me. I've, I've worked with about 18,000 women and I've been very fortunate to do this. Wow. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Now, if you could take everything that we talked about today, like what are some of the important aspects that you'd like to emphasize? I really feel um, like the golden nugget from today's um, conversation has been about women really doing some self-reflection and self-observation about how they might be over-pleasing others yes. because that does tend to take us down the rabbit hole mm -hmm. and look at where you might be over-pleasing and the why of that track back to perhaps old experiences, family, siblings, and look at whether you can actually make a shift in that um, behavioral pattern and saying no, setting some boundaries and being okay saying no. Yes, I yeah. like that. I like yeah. that a lot. Yeah. Well, Nicola, this has been amazing. And I thank you so much for coming yeah. on the show. Is there anything else that you'd like to say before we go? Um, not well, just feel free to um, connect with me on a strategy call. I love, I love building relationships, finding out about women's journeys. So Again, join me on my, find me on my website and set up a strategy call there so I can really support you. And this is why we're here. It's to help each other. Yes, it, it is why we're here. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Nicole. This has been amazing. I really appreciate you coming on the show and sharing all this knowledge. It's, it's so well needed in our society. And I think you probably have touched a lot of women's lives today. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You're an awesome interviewer. I really enjoy being with you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You have a great day. Yeah, you too. Thanks, Stacey. You take care. You take care too. Bye-bye.